Just finished working out a personal training client uh, as part of my physical therapy, personal training, fitness, nutrition, business. If you're interested, let me know. Uh, but we had a good conversation I wanted to share with you guys. He was sharing with me his blood work. So HDL, pretty low, 31. Usually genetic components there could be nutritional, could be stress related. We'll talk about, and I'm actually genetically, I know I've, I've done the testing for this. I'm genetically HDL low. Um, unfortunately predisposed to that. So HDL for anyone not familiar in the cholesterol world, uh, good cholesterol, but yeah, you generally want that number to be higher, to be more protective of what's going on inside as things get clotty, as you're talking about heart disease risk. So how do we increase HDL? Not the best research in the world, not a lot of strong stuff, but the big stuff that we can think about, talk about is decreasing stress, improving your sleep quality because you start to release hormones. That's the best understanding we have of sleep is you are kind of resetting the system. You're cleaning stuff out. Um, some great books like Why We Sleep and Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. Some really good books out there. Um, but sleep, very important. Again, check your hormones. Testosterone is a big piece of that cascade and component. If your testosterone is still high, we can be more likely to have uh, confidence that you're not going to have as much heart disease stuff going on. That's ultimately, we're trying to keep you alive. Um, the other big piece where we talk about this from the fitness perspective is lifting heavy. And we're talking about high levels of exertion. So into that nine out of 10 effort, 10 out of 10 effort, RPE, rate of perceived effort, rate of perceived exertion, however you want to uh, call it. And then sprint work. So I'm a big fan. Um, I believe it was Stacy Sims, Dr. Stacy Sims. Um, she has a book called Roar and the Next Level, mostly focusing for women. Um, the next level one is for uh, women around menopause, perimenopause, um, and just advocating for strength training and sprint work. So those are two things that really help your hormones, really help your cholesterol numbers, specifically HDL. When anyone figures out a drug you can take to improve your HDL, that's going to be a key. If you're taking a statin, what that does actually is it lowers all your cholesterol, including your good cholesterol, your HDL. So sprint work, and I believe, again, I'm giving credit to Dr. Stacey Sims. It's uh, think about like a sprint Saturday. So, and there's high intensity interval training, hit work. So you actually want sit work, and that doesn't mean sit on your tush. It means sprint interval training so you go really hard for 10 15 seconds and then you might need to rest for 90 seconds depending on you can play with these there's no perfect number but again those efforts those 10 to 15 second efforts need to be really high uh again to the point where you feel like you're pushing it let's just say that you're getting into your max heart rate if you're not touching that max heart rate then you're probably leaving money on the table and that's something that we tend to do as we get older so as you're getting older, if you're watching this, think about the last time you jumped, you sprinted, you really did something that pushed your limits physically. That doesn't mean we need to go and do that tomorrow if you're going from couch potato to, again, doing CrossFit and high intensity work tomorrow. But there, the more you can gradually build that up, the better. If you already have a decent fitness level, whatever age you're at, if you're not including that sprint training, again, you're leaving money on the table. So that's the really big key to this video if you want to improve your hormones your cholesterol all these correlates of health all these markers that kind of connect to health really consider safely introducing progressing some sprint work and some heavy lifting those are the two biggies if you're not sure how to do that reach out to somebody who has a over half a million dollars in education around how the human body works doctor to physical therapy uh Personal trainers, definitely, that you're gonna get a gamut of uh, levels and expertise when it comes to personal trainers as there's very little um, looking at how you enter the field. So I'm just gonna say that politically. But uh, yeah, video's long enough. I'm gonna cut it off here. If you guys have questions, let me know. Get 1% better, go do a sprint.